Welcome to Daughters of Reykjavik, the YouTube series. To quickly introduce ourselves, the Daughters of Reykjavik are a nine-piece all-female hip-hop collective from Iceland. In this series, we will be discussing a topic based on a song from our newly released album Soft Spot. We will discuss the topic among ourselves as well as with a female guest from the music industry. In this episode, we will hear from our band members Blythe and Steine, and our guest this episode is Katrina Morgensen from Mammut. This episode is titled Mile High Club, and in it we will be discussing touring. My name is Salka, and I will be your host. Enjoy! Welcome back, all of you lovely people, to our YouTube channel, which you've all been binge-watching, I am sure. And today I have two lovely members from the Daughters of Fake Week with me. Steine and Blythe, both legends in their own right. Oh, mm. thank you, girl. Oh, you thank are so you. welcome. Praise me more. Praise <laughs> me. We're going to talk about touring today, uh, which is based on a song called Mile High Club, which is all about yeah. kind of touring stories. And it's, yeah, and it's definitely a club we should be a part of. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've never had sex on a plane though, isn't it? Oh isn't that yeah, the Mile High Club. You did not know what it meant. To <laughs> no, now that you say it, I'm like, oh yeah, song. that's what it means. Yeah, but I've had forgotten. Uh -huh. Ah, but you I tried. thought you just wanted to be a part of the club. Not yeah, what <laughs> it it does. Does. I thought it was just like more like a airplane club. You yeah, know, like oh, we're always flying. <laughs> yeah, like Saga okay. club or whatever. Yeah, ah. whatever it's called. So you oh, would have no. gone to the table. Uh, you know, where you get like pro priority pass or yeah. whatever and been like, so what about this Mile High Club? Uh, I'm part of the Mile High Club. I uh, have do I get in here? I or have card. Can, Can I get you? into the lounge? I heard that if you're part of the Mile High Club, you get into the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> we should definitely business. try that the yeah, next we time. Yeah, for sure. Just here in, like with the Iceland Theres uh, Club. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never had sex on a plane. No, uh, me neither. I don't really think it's... But I think the reason why mm -hmm. is because we, d we it's not like we're gonna have sex with each other, like when we're on the plane. I've been oh, on a plane. I've, I have been. Yeah, able. because we're just traveling together. It's just us. Yeah, but you can uh, have who sex are we with gonna so, have? Like someone else on the plane. You can go. We're on not a the plane. only people on the plane. <laughs> I never see anybody else but you. No, but I mean, like that's just people that you just met. Yeah, I think that's. And kind we of are the always point. sitting together. No, you I can also go with your yeah, uh, of course, if you had your girlfriend, spouse, yeah, your but spouse I think, like, with you. I think like it could be, I th or that's what I've always thought of it is that like it's a person you just met oh. and you're like having sex and then you're you might be going like okay, to that's hot. separate countries oh, after that. That is so hot. That is so, <laughs> hot. <laughs> so there are like zero attachments. I almost once almost had a mile high club experience. Mm -hmm. And it was on a nine hour flight from LA to Iceland. And I was the whole time, I was talking to this guy who sat next to me. He was so fucking hot. And I was just like, I want to join. I I didn't tell him, but I was thinking like, I want to join that Mile High Club with Why didn't you. you do it? Because then when we had been talking for like seven hours and I was like, okay, now it's definitely enough <laughs> built up <laughs> to go to the bathroom and have some crazy ass <laughs> uncomfortable sex in a <laughs> tiny space <laughs> uh, then he starts talking about like uh, how he usually does his projects with his uh, girlfriend after mm. seven hours yeah and I was you like know, he has been thinking he, w he wanted to do the mile high club even though he had a girlfriend but then after seven hours he just gave up and was like okay no, I have a girlfriend no the thing is I think it was just a friend that was a girl Oh. But I just like you interpreted it. Uh, yeah, backed oh. out of it. So he friend zoned you, and you were just like, "I'm not going to talk to you anymore." No, no, no. He didn't friend zone me. No. I thought he had fr like. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I get it. I'm just oh. kidding. So friend that's my biggest regret in life. <laughs> <laughs> I think like I have definitely uh, with my, I think with my ex husband we were once like, should we do it? But then we... I have to say now, Salka got married when she was 18. Uh, and divorced at... 20. 
now like 21, okay. 22 maybe? I don't know. Just to give you the context, 22. she had a husband. Okay. Yeah. 21, I think. I think we were married for three years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but like, uh, the thing is, in Iceland, you always had to fly so early because yes. everything takes so long. Yeah. It takes so long to fly from here. So you always like, sorry. I don't even think that's the reason. It's I think, just I mean, that I think they're trying the to save money. Is that so? I think they're so. Like it's just like the cheapest to fly yeah. at that, that time. Oh, because true. nobody wants to have their flights because leave at that hour. Yeah. Iceland is just a small country and we just don't really have any power, I think. That's like, oh, you get to be in the back. Yeah. Of the that must not be. It, it must be like a money-saving thing for yeah. the for the airline. So the yeah, flights well, from yeah. Iceland so to Europe are always at like six a.m. So you always so have to annoying. wake up at like three a.m. to be at the airport at four a.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the airport is like in yeah forty-five minutes away. So it's a you don't feel sexy when you woke up at three a.m. No. no, you always feel you like stuck for like half an hour. Yeah. And yeah. then you're like completely fucked yeah mm -hmm. and then but then Icelanders are still like trying to have this like routine that when they go to the airport they always have a beer and mm. it's like because one it's time 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah. on a Tuesday like yeah. <laughs> uh, at one time we couldn't like we weren't allowed to drink beer in Iceland there was like a beer ban yeah we only could only drink strong alcohol so uh, the only place they could drink beer was in the airport because that's like an international oh, territory. That's where the and that's where it comes from. They, ah. We still have this, like when you go to the airport, you get a beer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like a... Doesn't matter. It's like an independence thing. 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the last thing I want to drink right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's also just like, yeah, we I'm on vacation. I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah. You know. Going to Tenerife. But it's also really funny to like, you know, kid yourself in that mm. way, like, yes, I'm on vacation, yeah. like, it's five in the morning mm. and I'm in Keplavik, yeah. you know. But so you were on the plane and yeah, you were sorry. like... Yeah, no, I just remember thinking this, like, I don't, I'm not gonna do it now. Like, I remember, I think we talked about, like, oh, we should do that. Yeah. And then we were both, like, on the plane at 6 a.m., like, there's no, ch there's, like, no chance I'm having sex in a bathroom right now. Yeah. <laughs> also rather, just, like, super yeah. tired, like... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> standing like fall asleep during probably. I remember going home from a uh, trip with a guy that I was seeing, and um, we had talked about it. I think on the way over that yeah. we should do it, like on, on the, the way, way back. back. Mm -hmm. But on the way back, he kind of had broken up with me a little bit. No. So I was like, kind of. So yeah. I was like. Should I try to do it still? Because are we... Uh, we really want no. to join this club. No, because I thought it would like be very demeaning to myself to do it. <laughs> yeah. That would like try right. to keep on to him by being sexually devious. Yeah. Oh, that oh. sounds like a horrible plan. Yeah, it was. So I just cry when I think of the Mile High Club. Oh. <laughs> but now you have a baby. Yeah, that's true. And a boyfriend yeah. that would always... Have sex, I with, sex with me on a plane. That's true. <laughs> That's a girl's dream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, just to be clear, like our song is not though about having sex on a plane. No. no. It's just the name. <laughs> it's just like a fun name because it's yeah. about traveling. Yeah. I wanted to ask you guys, which concert you think you've played is your favorite concert of all time? Oh, In all your touring bad. experiences. Yeah. Which one is the best? Like the first concert that comes to mind is uh, Raskille mm -hmm. in Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like kind of our first like festival gig abroad. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah, I think so. At least the it's only I remember. I yeah. Mean, we we were in Norway before, but it was not like as... Oh, that one was great as well. But yeah, it was... This is the biggest. It was like a big so festival. big. It was our first like huge, huge festival. festival it's yeah. a like hundred thousand people festival yeah i think it's three hundred thousand people no festival. no no i think it's five million people <laughs> <laughs> festival. Okay, anyway, anyway. <laughs> uh no because um because i remember we like showed up to go to the stage and there was another band playing and there were some people there like quite a few people watching that band and i was like ah okay they are here because they know this band but nobody knows us because we were like mm -hmm. It was like first a first time out of Iceland, 
really. Exactly. And it was a Danish band as well. Yeah. And it's in Denmark. And so it's we're in like, Denmark. okay, it's the local band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they've got the locals. Fans. Support their locals. Um, and then we go backstage and we're just prepping. Like, and also, just we don't have any expectations. No. So, no. um, because I know, because we were playing at the warm up days. Like, yeah. Also has that. these, like, Four, three, four, war three, warm, four warm up days before like the actual festival, and we were playing on the last warm up day. Yeah. And I have had friends that played on the warm up days where like their crowd were basically people that were like Is eating that? from or the like oh. food trucks. <laughs> yeah. And they were just like sitting there eating, and like coincidentally, they were playing as well. Yeah. So it was yeah. just like being a jazz pianist at a, you know, yeah. a cafe or something. Yeah. It was just like completely irrelevant that you were playing music yeah mm. um so and then maybe maximum 200 people like watching yeah so that was what i had mentally prepared for like yeah, yeah a crowd that's like inactively listening and then like maybe something like 200 people that actually came to see it yeah like hopefully we were like Maybe th there are always some Icelanders at these kind of festivals. Yeah. They're probably going to show It'll up. Be like <laughs> 20 Icelanders. <athletic people. laughs> yeah. <laughs> One friend in the crowd. Yeah. But yeah, then we are backstage and we are preparing and we're doing this chant. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing like our. We always do a chant before um, shows, which I think most bands do something like that. They like yeah. try to. But it's like 16 of us. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, it's like a it's like a when a sports team, you know. Yeah. R V K D T R. R V K D T R. And we were doing that, and then we heard like, at that point the band was now we're like nine people. Then we were like 16 people or something. It so was chaotic. It was chaos. <laughs> but fun. Um, and then we did the chat, and we heard like people um, applauding. Yeah. Because they heard us as do the chant, and yeah. they were like, "Oh my God, they heard us do a chant!" Like, yeah, there are some excited. people there. Because yeah. we there. had like we had like a wall between, like we couldn't, yeah, we couldn't see, see over the, the wall. We couldn't see at all how many people were there. No. Yeah, exactly. And then our DJ goes on stage, and she just like walks on, looks at the crowd, and then looks at us, and she's just like, she's just flabbergasted. Yeah, Her just face like, is yeah. just like. <laughs> and we're like, what? What's what? going on? Like, is there something ooh, wrong? Nobody yeah. there. And then yeah. she like plugs in her computer starts the beat and we walk on stage and like you know you we walk on stage and it's always like okay we walk on stage we're like so much swag and like so much like energy and we like start like that and then we look at the crowd and we're just like <laughs> and I remember it so clearly how it just kind of like lost all like feelings in my body and I was just like <laughs> just keep standing up like yeah because then it was like Oh, so many people! Like they you were couldn't see the end of the the crowd. Crowd, it was like there were like eight thousand people. Or something. Yeah, just like yeah, it was. It went all the way like, and that it was yeah. insane yeah, it was amount. So much fun. And it was also like just a great crowd. Like yeah. they were both. Yeah. There were so many of them. Mm -hmm. I remember there was like a a huge Icelandic flag being waved yeah. somewhere in the crowd. Yeah, and then there were girls, you know, that just like took their tops off and some of us took our tops off and yeah. it was like girl power and there was a guy in the front of the audience yeah. and he like had some paint on yeah. and he cried for the entire time. Yeah. It was like a, cath a cathartic moment for him, yeah. I don't know why, but uh, like all the paint came off yeah. because of sweat and tears yeah. and they were just great. Also, and there we was got also so some pumped. girls in the crowd, or at least a girl. I remember like seeing a girl who was also crying. It was just. Mm. I remember seeing a lot of girls crying. Yeah, in right. The they were like extremely emotional. About yeah. It. And I think, yeah, at that point, we were like, perf our performance was like, was like really chaotic and raw. Raw and just like this pure force of energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think. At that point, so many people had probably not seen this no. many women on stage together. Yeah. First of all, just like this many women on stage together, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then like second of all, them like playing just their songs. Yeah. And like having fun together on stage yeah. and just like doing whatever they wanted and then like taking their top off and just yeah. fucking things up. And I think it just um I would imagine seeing it like I've seen something that was so much 
smaller in scale, but just like included women that were obviously in charge of what they were doing on stage. Mm -hmm. And that was enough to be like a transformative experience for me, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I can't imagine like seeing this at an eight, like at 15, 16, which are like a lot of teenagers go to Roskilde, you know. Yeah. So there are probably a lot of young teenage girls that just saw this. Yeah. And I couldn't, I, you know, I, I am sure that is probably likely to be a transformative experience. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm starting to cry. I'm getting chills right now just talking <laughs> yeah. about this. Maybe because, you know, I just had a baby, but like, you That's know, important. it was beautiful. No, it was yeah. very beautiful. Was beautiful. I, I really cherish that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really amazing. Yeah. It's also, I remember feeling this like, because we had prior to that maybe been just like questioning our you yeah. know, worth mm. as a band and stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, as you, because if you're doing something that is maybe not seen a lot, then you're always gonna meet some criticism and like skepticism. And so I think this was like a moment where we felt really accepted. Yeah. yeah. And like f felt that what we were doing made sense and had had an impact and like yeah. was important for us to continue uh, doing what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because normally like we had just really been playing like concerts in Iceland yeah, up yeah. until then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we had like made some like choreography like in the first song, you know, we would do like uh, like after spending the grape or okay this and a text and we would we all did this. It was the very first song. Mm. And the whole, I remember the whole crowd went like this. Yeah. And mm. like, because people were so, like we had never had that in Iceland. That people true. just absolutely accepted us. I think and just wanted to like embrace mm -hmm. us and just be like, yeah, you are the greatest thing. Exactly. This is, reminds me of, uh, I was thinking about like, I, I went to a, a great drag show the mm. other day. Um, and, uh, in the theater and uh, oh sorry this is a little bit of going out detour, of it. Yeah. Okay. it's a detour but um what i love about drag shows is that um you you're just watching at least for me uh you you're just there to like uh, th you know say like okay i love you as a character like yeah. you can there it's the performance, it doesn't have to be the best dancing or the best singing or the best mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. It just has to have the best confidence ever. Mm -hmm. You know, the person there just um, yeah. is just there to say, hey, I am, you know, I'm the greatest. And yeah. we're all there for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. taking up this space and I'm not apologizing yeah, for it's it. It's really, it's just about watching other people taking up space. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just to get us back on track. Yeah, sorry. Like this, no, 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 like love it. Um, the, that uh, experience of, from Roskile was like, it always like, uh, it always comes, it's the first, always when I get asked this question, yeah. like your favorite festival, it always comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was, uh, I was so surprised. We were so accepted mm -hmm. after having so much hate in Iceland. And uh, and we just, we went all in, like, mm -hmm. and I remember we were going crazy on stage. Oh. I was, ca or I don't even remember it that much being on stage. I just yeah. remember those feelings of being like, ah, oh, and then like having the feeling of being like, okay, and I should just go as big as I can. And then just seeing the photos from that gig. Yeah. And apparently there was like this one photo that won like, like festival photo of the year or something, mm -hmm. which is just us. It's like you climbing the, like the side of the stage, you're <laughs> yeah. like with your like, t-shirt or something off and another girl who was topless and, and she's somebody like, like fucking to the audience <laughs> like it was just like everything was happening and it's just so much chaos yeah but it's beautiful uh, yeah oh Matt, it was a I great wish there kick. was like a recording of that oh yeah i wish there was more i would love to see a show on that scale from us at yeah. that time you know because mm -hmm. i uh, yeah I, I, you know, there are some videos like... Um, this was 2014, right? No, 16. 16, 16 yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. 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 Um, uh, do you have a different gig in mind, Blythe, that uh, you 
consider one of the best concerts you've done. Can I, s I want to say something first, because when I remember it, because mm -hmm. uh, I was doing laundry the other day. Yeah. And I was thinking about... This uh, is how all life stories start now. So I was uh, doing the laundry. Uh, I was cooking dinner for my family. <laughs> uh, and I was thinking... Um, I was just thinking about our band and I was thinking about like how we started out. And, you know, what we're about really, it's just... We're just girls having fun, mm -hmm. you know? It's just... That's what yeah. we're mm -hmm. essentially Drives about. Drives us, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was just thinking... We're just having fun, and it's amazing to me that a that is in itself a rebellious act. Yeah. yeah. And b <laughs> it's something that we have actually had to fight for. Yeah. Yeah. Just this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Even though we live in a you know privileged country and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like Iceland is number one when it comes to equality of the sexes. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. like, oh hell no, <laughs> we're not there. I mean. Maybe it's number one, but it's that's a sad fact. That's yeah. a very sad fact. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but then I then I also thought because we uh, because of this we are a band and we are also a statement, and because of that we have been able to play um, so many festivals and many places yeah. that other bands have never been able to play in. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I was just thinking about this because we've been to like. We've been to like a film festival and some sort of book convention, and we've gone the to the old people there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were like, "Okay, everybody, bend down," and they were all like, "Ah!" <laughs> <laughs> and then when we were like, "Okay, and jump," because we like tried to include the audience in our gigs, <laughs> and it took them like a few seconds to get up <laughs> back up. But that's so good. I mean, yeah. It probably makes us also a better band to have been like playing for all these kinds yeah. of crowds. And like Not we've been in Greenland, we've been like in the north of Norway, like yeah. we've Multiple been times we've been in great we've been in like big festival places, but also like very obscure, yeah, weird places. Yeah. yeah. And that's just a fun experience for me, and I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. Mm. And it's kind of like because we don't do our own booking, like we have a booker. So we sometimes get very like limited like information on like what kind of festival it is. We just like show up and, <laughs> and then it's kind of like we don't know what how many people are going to be there, but <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to do our thing. We yeah. don't know what the crowd is going to be like. We don't know like. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my uh, one of my favorite gigs was when we went to the Faroe Islands. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it was like I was the there. You weren't there. Oh, oh, you weren't there. Well, that's fine. I love hearing about it. Because <laughs> I mostly hear that it was horrible. Well, the, like, trip itself was horrible, apparently. Scott, the gig was amazing. The yeah. gig was great. Like, yeah. I crowd surfed like I do. <laughs> and uh, It was a success that time. Yes. Like, we've tried to crowd surf so many times and it has failed. <laughs> we've had many bruises. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we tried to, when we were in the east of Iceland and <laughs> me, me and you we were like okay we're gonna I'm do it we're gonna do it this was like one of the first times we were actually gonna crowd surf and we were like pumping each other to do it and so we we went on the same time which is a horrible idea because the crowd only has focus for one person at a time really yeah. and this mm. time it, the focus was on Stene <laughs> so they just grabbed her and she flew you know across the crowd <laughs> and I just went like ding <laughs> Straight no. on my face. <laughs> also because what I had done is I got like eye contact <laughs> with the people. Like I was like, okay, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. But you were like, oh, we're going. So you just like ran in without like letting the people know you were coming. Yeah, I learned so for my them lesson. it was just like, yeah, they were looking at me and then all of a sudden like, ah! Oh! Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I was talking about the Faroe Islands, so I'm just gonna have it short. Like, the gig was amazing, the crowd was, you know, they were crazy good. We had been together in, in hard times, yeah. some would say. Yeah. Uh, so we were like really, you know, um, there was a lot of togetherness, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, we, had, we were in sync with each other. The trip itself was really weird, because when we came there, uh, like and there are a lot of vegans in the in the band and there's nothing there was nothing vegan at, in this town at least they just had there like there wasn't even a store there wasn't <laughs> even a store there was just whale meat everywhere 
and um, lying around. No, <laughs> <laughs> I remember I went to the store to try to find food for us. There was yeah. like this one store that I could go to, and the only vegan thing I could find was called fruit soup. Eh? That means like fruit soup, and it was just like you know, you know, dust in a bag <laughs> that you have to put water in. And the girls were so mad at me, and I was like, "What do you want me to do? Like, I spent a lot of money here on fruit soup, eh? like." <laughs> I've heard this story so many times from like all the members, like the That's horrible experience when Fly returned from her like journey of getting food, and everyone was so hungry, and then returned with these like packets of fruit soup. <laughs> it sounds like horrible. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, it was, but it was so much did fun. You, did you eat it? I don't think we did. I think we just drank alcohol no. the entire time. <laughs> Shit. Like, Bisa was pregnant in that trip, Yeah, right? was she? Yeah, oh, yeah, she was super pregnant. Yeah, I remember oh, also t wanting to have, like, this crazy party. We were sleeping in a school, and I remember we, we invited another band from, I think, Germany to come and party with us. Yeah. And I always have these dreams of being, like, a rock and roll star and having these crazy parties. Um, but, you know, musicians today, there's just no rock and roll. <laughs> and this German band, they were like so boring. I'm sorry. We were trying, like, we, we ended up being like, okay, should we play a drinking game? Is that, should we just do that? Just get really drunk, you know? Yeah. Because they were just like really laid back, you know, and well, they were just professional, I guess. Like, what, not wanting to drink too much before the festival or something, but. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing also. When you're touring, like, we were only doing this gig, then we were going back to Iceland. And, like, basically, like, when you're touring uh, and you're doing, like, show in every day, yeah. you just don't have the energy yeah, to party. True. Unless you're going to be, like, drinking every day and every night. Yeah. And you're going to, like, just like, continue just be on being a And then you're going to have to be on drugs as well, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. then you're going to have to be, like, have made that conscious decision that you're yeah. like, I'm going <laughs> we're to just gonna like, stay drunk yeah, for the like, whole this trip. This is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. And that I think most people can't do that. No. no. I have like toured once with uh, like on a tour bus where we um, or like once I did it in like January. <laughs> <laughs> I once, once in my life. I, uh, but then we were doing shows like every night. Mm -hmm. And then you just I thought I was thought of it then. I was like, yeah, okay, it's not the same as no, because usually we do like sprinter tours where we do maybe like four concerts tops at a time, and we also have kids, some of us, so mm. like we can't really book a month long consistent tour. No, um, but this was like a two week um, tour in a bus where we like played every night, and then I think every three concerts we had like one day off or something. This was with Hunter, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're like so tired and you never have any time during the day. You look, it always takes the whole day to just like set up, you know, you get into the new location. Because yeah. I thought when we were going, I was like, oh my God, we're going to all these cities. I'm going to like, I've never been here. I'm going to see this place and I'm going to mm, go yeah. to a museum. And and it's the same with yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. we've never. Like, we, we, uh, we haven't done the tour bus thing, but we've done like where we fly usually, mm. which is horrible for uh, planet Earth. Like sprinters. Uh, but um, yeah, we're like, oh yeah, we get to be in four different countries in four different days. And you are just exhausted mm. from having to wake up super early, go to the airport, mm -hmm. fly there, have a layover, then fly there, then you know, you get there and you're just the desperately need of a nap. So you take a nap until you have to go to some check, then go back to the hotel, yeah. like take another yeah. nap, then like go eat something, start putting on your makeup, do the show straight to bed. <laughs> like mm. it yeah. is such a weird like routine, I guess. It's mm -hmm. in, yeah. And especially if you're doing like we've done, I at least remember one tour we did where we had to like at least like two times we would like go to we would get to the country go to soundcheck then play the show yeah then we would sleep for like two hours and then we had to go to the airport so it was like you know flights in the middle of the night yeah so we never had you know we had maybe two concerts in a row where we didn't have we hadn't gotten any consistent sleep yeah um i think we should wrap this conversation up yeah because um we have to do so much more in this 
in, in this episode. Yeah. yeah. So much to talk about. That's yeah. True. And um, we also have a guest. We're going to have a guest later on. Yeah. Which or guests plural? I don't know yet if she's going to be alone or. Okay. Yeah. We we're going to have a guest. Plural, at least one guest. Yeah. Um so now we're going to see a performance from us. We're going to perform the song Mile High Club. And after that, we're going to talk to the one guest or the two guests and see what or the they three, have who to knows? say. Or three or four or <laughs> five million. <laughs> one hundred thousand. No. And we're going to see what they have to say about touring. So thank you guys for watching. So. Flugur stelti flýi, veldi voru ekki spent Stelpun sitja ars og glent Löpi tóllin flýpi þar sem okkur langar í Tykja brunni mín, Jerry Lee Hótur svita fleiði bar, stelpa mína fylla þar Kemur síðan Jóna Rath Tjúfið þér að kósi maður klæði ný Sýkir skoppin og ég steki síðan kroppin 50.000 króna kampa vín popin Mm, ah, gerir þetta svona því ég gef það Sjúsi eða steik, bítið þjóð, gera með það Fæ mig bara bæði því ég gef það Rækar þetta dammarka það blitland Meira enda fín, alltaf þetta tím Ride with my girls on the fast lane, got her own private car at Dream Dust Age. Feels like I'm going straight down in an airplane, running too fast, so hard, can you mansplain? Please do, don't know what you think of me anyway. I cannot run you almost any day. Even if you pay up, you cannot say when no one is around you. Bitch, you can say my name. So you were listening to our song Mile High Club, which we were performing. And now we have a guest with us, Katrina Moensen. Mm-hmm. Moensen? Moensen? Yeah. <laughs> Is it Danish? <laughs> no, yeah, it's Danish, but you just say Moensen. Yeah. Moensen. It's a very Icelandic accent. Moensen. Mm-hmm. That's how I know it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you're part of a band called Mammut, yes. which is a very, very acclaimed, great band. Mm-hmm. Thank you. 
in my humble opinion. <laughs> uh, do you want to introduce yourself more yeah. thoroughly, maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, my name is Katrina, mm -hmm. and I am a musician mm -hmm. and a visual artist, and I'm the singer of the band. <laughs> and I'm here because of Mahmoud in this interview or this podcast, and we have been playing together since 2000 and th late 2003. Whoa. That's so and then crazy. I was. 13 or something? Oh now my I'm God. 31 or something? You, were you 13 when you won the Battle of the Bands? Yeah, 14. Okay. Wow. I know. Damn. Very young. So, so wow. we've been together now for 17 years. So that's Whoa. interesting for a start. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we're still going. Hopefully and we're still, still fresh. It's so amazing that you are able to, like it's inspiring that you're able to keep this group together yeah. for mm -hmm. like because it's so hard to find a group that is mm -hmm. able to do that you yeah know? there's so many conflicts that come up usually i know uh, and there's conflicts definitely yeah mm -hmm. but you know you some you learn through it and then yeah. i think it also has to do with the age being so young it like it's almost like it's um part it's so much a part of your i mean it's more mm -hmm. than half for life mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's almost like, you know, a conflict with your family. You just like kind of work through it, but yeah. you're not breaking up. Mm -hmm. So like unconditional yeah, it's like love. Yeah, yeah, almost, in yeah. yeah, in a way. Yeah. And are you still like inspired to make music together? And yes, go we always find that spark. Mm -hmm. That's but great. It, it definitely goes away sometimes. I have like, I think I've talked about Mammut in this podcast. Yeah before okay. yeah because we were talking about like inspirational shows we had seen as mm -hmm. like teenagers and mm -hmm. stuff and when i saw my first when i was at airwaves 2011 yeah my first airwaves mm -hmm. i was like 16 yeah and i saw you guys play at nasa yes and this was i think i consciously realized this was the first time i'd seen like I think just like women playing instruments yeah. on stage, mm -hmm. not even kidding. Like, and mm -hmm. I was kind of like shocked myself mm -hmm. at yeah. that point. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I've never, and I remember watching you and like, um, I think some, like it changed something yeah. for me a lot in like terms mm -hmm. of how I looked at, cause I, I listened to so much rock at yeah. that time, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I was just in the face of like starting to actively seek out women, yeah. maybe. Um, but th that was very recent, so it was like really inspirational for me to see you guys. Yeah. Did you, your cyber started out as a like, you were playing drums and stuff. Was it that That's what concert? we said. No, we oh. always <laughs> like, uh, no, we didn't really have a band. I, it's a really long story. I, okay. I think it's not, we should not tell it now. No. But like, it was just, I, I remember like, I went to so many concerts that airwaves, and this one was like the one that always stood out for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's really, that's very, like, good to hear that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think we should. Yeah, I want to ask you some questions about today's topic, which yeah. is uh, touring, mm -hmm. and we're basing this topic off our song "Mile High Club," mm -hmm. and I wanted to firstly ask you if you have a concert that you th think is like the most horrible concert you've ever played in mind this is not very inspirational but like i already asked the girls about the best concert yeah. and i kind of like interested in hearing about the worst the concert. worst concert i have a few in mind <laughs> 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 i have yeah i was it was 2017 yeah just uh, you know when our last album came out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were playing in switzerland and like in like um like an old, uh, I don't know what to say, like a cave or something, but like a man-made cave, like okay. a bunker or something uh -huh. like this. Yeah. yeah. And it was not that, it was not a big venue. It was just, yeah, like, I don't know. Was uh, it a festival? No, or? no, 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 it was just <laughs> us playing. It was just a small town mm -hmm. and it was maybe 200 uh, people, you know, it's just a very small venue. And the stage was low and uh, but people were very intrigued in the concert and we were like maybe halfway into our set and people were very, you know, and it was very sweaty and very, yeah, and it was not a good energy in there. It was okay. like, a, ooh, like a heavy one, like yeah. not, a, not a interesting mystic one. It was mm -hmm. just like, well, dark. Yeah. And then, then 
I see. This is just the top of my mind. And it's just I haven't thought about that since, I think. And then I see this guy, this couple. And the couple are like, um, what do you say? Like giving each other like hand jobs. Oh my God. <laughs> while listening to the music. And yeah. it was, and because we were like in the, you know, in the back, the tunnels was like this. And, you know, we were just where it ended in yeah. the tunnel. So you were just like the most claustrophobic feeling I've ever gotten, oh you know, God. like being like there and oh. then like the face is so close. And then, p and it was like, at the, the feeling was like everybody was like, turning into something you know like yeah um, mm, and like, like morphing morphing into it was like a like a bad buffy episode oh my like a fever dream or yeah something. yeah like it was just like a wah you know and then like you know oof. and you're stuck there and, like, and I'm stuck <laughs> and people are like trying to give each other like sexual orgasm I'm like that's yeah. so horrible to yeah, it was to like be playing and scene. seeing that someone was like yeah this, people are starting to like Basically, I have sex yeah. mm -hmm. with, I don't know, it's very, yeah. like, you feel, I would feel very, I mean, then they're basically watching you, like, porn or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Really that's what I thought, you know, I was yeah. like, and, you know, because I'm all for people, like, enjoying themselves, but that was, like, um, there was something about that. It not the time, nor the place. Yeah, or the energy, <laughs> it was not like, oh, people making beautiful love, it was yeah. just like, oh, yeah. you know, oh. <laughs> and I remember after that, I was like, oh. Oh you my know. god, that yeah. sounds terrible. Oh yeah, my it was god. very off, I can tell you. <laughs> that's, that's on top of my mind. Oh my god, do but you remember something? This just reminds me of when we were playing, we had been touring, and this is not the worst concert we played down, but we were had been touring like this very proper or nice festivals, and then we came to this festival in Germany where everything mm. was very dirty, everyone was, okay, it's okay to be dirty though, <laughs> but still everybody was like, on drugs and if we took up our phone like very aggressive people were like oh you can't do this here like with their dobermans or something and like so the energy was, was very fusion you were playing at the same yeah. fusion exactly. festival it's a beautiful, it a beautiful festival, festival but this but kind of like the end of the world or yeah, something yeah, yeah. and we came Mad on stage and yeah. then they yeah. were like this girls lying on the floor like very high or something in front of this <laughs> stage. In like front of like the the subs, they were like sleeping yeah. <laughs> before yeah. our show. And we were like, oh, our okay. show was like yeah. very energetic and everything. <laughs> and we were like, this is so strange yeah. because also because we had been touring and mm -hmm. all on at every festival, all the audience were very engaged and like mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. fe we felt very connected to mm -hmm. the people everywhere. And there it was like just. Everybody was was in a different. You're just in a different zone. Yeah, yeah. it because, was. Yeah. It was an experience, mm -hmm. but it, there were, I, we didn't feel feel claustrophobic. No, it was, it was, or yeah. <laughs> not as bad as the handjob. No, 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 sure. no, no, no. We got the most silence of all our gigs in Fusion Festival. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we were like, like in the we were in um it was like a uh, we weren't playing outside. We were playing yeah. inside the like a, a, like a dome. Yeah, like a dome, like yeah. a round <gasps> dome. Uh -huh. And the, w it was crazy because, you know, the chattering is so... Yeah. But then uh, we were doing our most silent song or yeah. our, our most stripped down song. And everybody, maybe everybody was just so high or something that everybody <laughs> was just like <gasps> in, in it. But we couldn't hear anyone oh speak or move around or anything. Yeah. <gasps> that was that was crazy. That yeah. was Wasn't it one of nice? the good. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the best shows, you know, yeah. like audience wise. Yeah. Because yeah. it was so... In, uh, wow. Intense with the focus. Yeah. I think maybe that's what they needed. They needed something that was more like stripped down yeah. and just like energy, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't know. Because we were just like eh, really aggressive and they must have been just freaking yeah. out because they were <laughs> tripping or something. Yeah. Like, oh my god, <laughs> there are nine of them. Like, ah. <laughs> Where do all these women yeah. come from? <laughs> my like, yeah. But I it was okay. It was a good show though yeah, and everything. But frying. this was like. Yeah, but it was crazy to land there. Yeah. yeah. It was like landing exactly. on another planet. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think my, well, like, I played with Cyber at uh, Sona Barcelona mm. once and it was. It's a really long, boring tech story, mm -hmm. but like, like everything that can go wrong technically mm -hmm. basically went wrong. Mm -hmm. And like one of the things was that, like during the first two songs, they were playing a song by Young Lean out of our monitors. <laughs> Oh, no. And we were like, can you turn off Red Bottom Sky? Like, <laughs> please, like it's been going on for two songs. And then we, 
Um, <laughs> for some ridiculous reason, the front of house mixer was not in front of the stage, but yeah. like next to it, uh -huh. behind a curtain. Oh. So eventually, we like t took the curtain away, yeah. and then there was no <laughs> like no sound engineer on the console. This is so it's like he just like went outside for a cigarette a or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like put the curtain there <laughs> and put on red button sky oh and hope for the best. God. Yeah, it's, it's like horrible. horrible. Also because this is shown at Barcelona, maybe yeah. one of your first. Big festival gig. Yeah, for it was like our first big festival brought, like for Cyper, and we were yeah. so like prepared for it, and yeah, then yeah, just yeah. like, oh, it yeah. was like the equivalent of like dreaming you're naked in your school or something. Yeah. This entire gig mm -hmm. was just like everything you've thought of that could go wrong yeah. technically like went wrong. Yeah. This is way, this yeah. is an like reoccurring nightmare for me. I think to yeah. go on stage and don't know what's happening or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and there's nobody, there's nobody to support. Port. Yeah. Like there's mm -hmm. no, you know, technician that's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm here to help you. Help yeah. you. Yeah. There's just nothing, mm -hmm. and then you have, and there was like 500 people in mm -hmm. the crowd. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you have 500 people, mm -hmm. you don't know shit, and mm -hmm. you don't speak the language. Like you know, mm -hmm. most of the engineers were like kind of bad English mm -hmm. speakers. So it's just like extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you feel so like drained and empty after yeah, this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I think before we wrap this conversation up, I wanted yeah. to like talk a little bit about because now we're obviously living in a very strange time mm -hmm. to talk about even talk about touring mm -hmm. because we uh, there's a global pandemic, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, but also because I think there's so many. Um, obviously the conversation of global warming is also very mm -hmm. uh, apparent and you know touring is something that's not very environmentally sustainable mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. like do you think there's what do you think is like the future of touring or like the idea of doing um, something like that I think the I think this um, the global warming situation should be like um, I think uh, like we've seen with how people or how governments are reacting towards the uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They are just like shutting everything down and you mm -hmm. know th so they have proved to us that obviously there are lots of stuff we can do if there mm -hmm. is a will. So I don't think this is something that uh, should be put on like o like history has done like always put it on individuals or mm -hmm. or little uh, little communities yeah. who yeah. take responsibility of this because or responsibility, of course, we all take responsibility, but mm -hmm. this is not our, you know, it doesn't matter how much plastic we will recycle. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, th that's, that is not the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is bigger things. So I think we should, we can tour <gasps> in the future with whatever equipment mm -hmm. there is yeah. at that time. Yeah. And if there is a will, um, there can be made drastic changes, mm -hmm. mm. whatever that is. And yeah. I think... You know, we can put pressure on governments, uh, mm. but it's obvious that there there isn't really a will to do that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if there is a will, you can see like with COVID-19, they can turn around the economy if they want to. They mm -hmm. can do whatever yeah. they want to if there is an emergency. So, exactly. yeah. so, of course, you have to be a bit individual and responsible, but I don't think we should, you know, be worrying about uh, traveling on a... Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah, I don't think like we as a band take a stand. We're not yeah, going to go Yeah, I mean, of course we can take a stand mm. with like, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's us driving around, you know, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's my opinion. Yeah, you know, and and I think that's also um, just history. That's like, you know, I think we should start. Uh, we will be able to tour, mm -hmm. and I think uh, like culture and spreading all sorts of energy, yeah. human energy, and being like. Nurturing what makes us human yeah. uh, should not stop. No, mm -hmm. I think that definitely, like, I agree with you. That should not be the first, like, we should not prioritize, like, cutting what gives people joy. No. Uh, like, because there's so many things that give people, like, that j are just benefiting so few people in mm -hmm. the world. And I think touring is not one of them, no. you know? And mm -hmm. I think uh, we could definitely look into yeah basically so many ways to reduce mm -hmm. so much of the shit we're doing mm -hmm. um before we do this yeah. but i mean obviously i'm pretty uh biased because i'm a musician and mm -hmm. i want to tour <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um 
I think we should move on to the uh, last segment of the show, which mm -hmm. is usually a performance, but you were yeah. gonna maybe show us a music video or something? Yes. Maybe mm -hmm. the one you're recording later. Maybe. I don't know, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> but I mean, I guess we will, yeah. we can figure it out later. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy, I'm you looking forward to showing yeah. this piece. Of Do you uh, often make the videos for Mammut? Or usually? Yes, uh, well, yes, yes, we are much of like, we are like, um, uh, what do you say, uh, art collective. And yeah. we have like a graphic designer and... and uh, mm -hmm. Similar to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah. self-sufficient. So we, we, we do a lot of, in collaboration with, you know, other friends, you know, but we like to do it um, most of it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. I'm Love excited it. to see and mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming to thank the show. Thank you for having me. It's been very nice mm -hmm. talking to you. <laughs>